again, everything got destroyed today, but at least these are the ones we were able to identify. Again, this for me to turn around and say, well, I knew the market was going to go down 5%. It's ridiculous. It's, you know, it's ridiculous. If you notice every single day, we try to put some longs, we try to put some shorts just in case the market doesn't want to do what we think it's going to do. So it was more of, of just being responsible and saying, hey, you know what? The market just doesn't go up every single day. Allegedly. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody's doing okay. So uh, we kind of know the tally, right? We know the scoreboard. 5% uh, loss today on uh, the NASA Composite. Uh, you got 3% loss on the Dow, 3.5% uh, loss on the S&P. Um, you know, it's scary. It's scary when you look at it on paper. Um, when you kind of step back and, and, you know, really analyze it from what it is and look at it at face value, um, we've kind of been here before, right? If you look at, and, and again, if you look at every single chart tonight, um, you look at the S&P, we'll use the SPIs as a barometer. Uh, if you look at the SPIs, uh, all the SPIs did today was literally aggressively, and aggressively again, uh, retrace all the way back to this rising support. Again, why it's not scary on the surface is if you look at the rising support, it's the same rising support that we've been watching uh, since the March lows, right? Uh, same thing with the Qs, and they did this perfectly. Uh, same thing with the Qs. If you notice, every single time it hits this trend line or reclaims this trend line, it goes right back up. And the same thing uh, with the Dow. Okay, we'll use the diamonds as a proxy. So on face value, uh, it doesn't look bad, right? I mean, it doesn't, doesn't look bad at all just because, again, from the technical aspect, there was absolutely no uh, damage being done. Uh, when you listen to CNBC and when you listen to other outlets and when you listen to um, uneducated traders that just don't have enough experience to give uh, a concrete opinion, it does look scary, right? You know, you turn around and go, wow, that was down a thousand points. That was down 3,000 points several times in March, a couple thousand times, excuse me, a couple thousand points on numerous occasions. So again, a thousand point drop, it does sound pretty, you know, it does sound pretty aggressive. But again, when you look at um, when you look at the big picture and you really take a step back, okay, and analyze the weekly trend line of everything, uh, it really does not look bad. Can it get worse? Absolutely. We'll talk about uh, potential scenarios for tomorrow. But, but I think the most important part was um, through all this was going on, you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks, um, I've been very bullish, right? Uh, but every single update, pretty much in nausea, we've been always saying, hey, guys, again, it's just a matter of time, okay? We don't know if it was going to end uh, tomorrow, the next day, the following day, three years from now. We don't know. So it's not the point today that I turn around and say, see, I told you this was going to happen. It's not a see, I told you it was going to happen. I, again, I, I, I don't care about being right. I'm wrong so much, okay? Uh, every trader I know is wrong so much. So it's not a point of being wrong. It's about the point of being prepared. And I think that was kind of my echo for, for pretty a long time now. And it only takes once to get caught. And I think that's the most important part. And what I like about today's session was it's not that we caught everything. And you'll see on the pivots, uh, the most ironically, two out of the four really good pivots today were to the upside on uh, BYND and Boeing of all things. Um, but of all the the good things that happened today and the good pivots that were available to us, um, I think the most important part was we were aware, okay? I start uh, morning strategy pretty much every day, say, hey, look, this could be the day. I mean, this really could be the day. Always have one eye on the futures, always have one eye uh, on, on your names, because again, and I said this all the time, as stocks get really tired, okay, uh, the further they are from their initial pivot, initial daily confirmation, the further they're in orbit, the, the higher probability they're going to fail. And you see this every single day. Obviously not to the magnitude of a 5% drop 
on the NASDAQ composite, but you started getting clues. And yesterday was actually uh, the first clue. We did see a very aggressive rug pull in the market. It didn't factor into the rest of the day just because, again, the market was so strong and the Dow closed up very, very aggressively, up like 460, 470 points, whatever it was yesterday. But you saw the signs. And this morning, once you started seeing names that had big, big runs, just couldn't rally with the rest of the market, especially off pre-market lows, you started watching for clues. And we, we got the clues. We got the clues. Uh, we identified the names. Was this one of those days that, oh my God, there was 30 stocks we put on the feed. We were so 100%. No, we, I wasn't 100% prepared for um, a 5% pull. But again, we were 100% pull of being aware. And that's the most important part. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to be wrong a lot. This is the hardest business in the world just because financial, you know, financials are, 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 are you know, exposure every single day. Your money is exposed. So of course your emotional level is going to be there. Of course your, 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 uh, your opinions are going to be skewed. Of course you're going to second guess everything. Okay. I don't have all the answers, but I'm trying to do whatever it takes year by year to kind of figure out most of the questions. And what we saw today was gravity. That wasn't, you know, wasn't anything more. Stocks got tired. They got pulled. Now, again, the question is, what happens next? Okay. Um, again, we have to take a step back. We have to take a deep breath and try to figure out rationally what's going to happen tomorrow. Number one, uh, tomorrow is uh, the day before a long weekend, right? It's Labor Day weekend. I know a lot of people who logged off today um, pretty much mid-morning, okay, and are taking advantage of the longer, uh, the longer weekend. So, Tomorrow, it's not really the day that you're really going to get uh, a magnified confirmation of what's going to happen next week. We don't know. I don't think there's going to be a lot, enough volume. I don't think there's going to be enough aggression, both to the upside and to the downside, to kind of warrant a macro opinion what we think is going to happen next week. But I think also at this juncture, you have to simplify your opinion for tomorrow. So if you notice, again, we, we already know the numbers. We already saw what happened and all the damage and also so forth and so on on the indexes from a point wise and a percentage wise. But technically, like again, take a deep breath, take a stand back, look at it logically. Okay. I still think the trend line is intact. The question is tomorrow, are we going to gap up? And confirm this move and start going lower. And if we do close below the, you know, the 280, 281 level uh, on the di uh, on the diamonds, right, and start looking at the Qs as well. Let me use Qs as a parameter. If we start, you know, maybe losing 282 on a close, right, for the Qs, then we have a whole different conversation. Then we have a much more aggressive conversation of what could happen next to the downside, right? Because again, any close below 282 on the Qs really confirms this whole move here. And again, the bears have been salivating for anything uh, to kind of be right, to kind of get back uh, to get back into the game. And again, if you believe in the theory, and, and again, the whole point of the PS60 theory is trading from supply to supply, demand to demand. So if you believe in that theory, any close below the 282 level, well, it would have a very good measure potential all the way down to 268. Again, we've seen this song and dance for two years now. The market is weak. It looks like about to die. It's about to die. It's about to die. Yada, yada, yada. Three days later, 52 week highs. So again, I don't want to put the, the cart in front of the horse. Um, I don't want to overthink uh, for tomorrow's session. If we do gap up tomorrow, and that's probably be the more ideal point from the, from the value point of view. If we do gap up tomorrow and start losing today's ranges, then yes, you're going to have a lot of value uh, to the downside, again, nobody's talking about Armageddon. Nobody's talking about the end of the world. Uh, Satan is not going to come out and start, you know, you know, start you know, staking his claim. It's just trading day by day, guys. The way we talk about trading to the upside, one trade at a time, one day at a time, the same thing to the downside. Again, don't make things harder. This is the hardest business in the world. You're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong a lot, okay? You're going to have sleepless nights. You're going to have agita, okay? For those of you guys who don't know that, it's an Italian word right? Okay. So the most important part, again, rational thinking. Okay. And if you are, if you are uncomfortable uh, about a kind of a point of reference day tomorrow, kind of a line in the sand situation, again, take the long weekend off, right? Let's go, go rest your head. Again, the market will be here on Monday. Okay. And if you have, you know, 25, 30% of the volume 
uh, for tomorrow and you have kind of a line in the sand kind of day, it's going to make things harder. Okay, your, your, your rational thinking is going to be out the window and you're going to start looking at the market from the emotional point of view. So if you are a new trader or even if you, if you are a professional trader, been doing it for a long time, again, nothing is going to get settled tomorrow technically. Okay, even if the market gets, you know, gets ex destroyed tomorrow, again, if nobody is around to defend prices, is tech, you know, is the technical confirmation valid, right? If we gap down tomorrow and reclaim uh, rise in support, again, is the market bull market still rational going to next week? I, again, I think we'll get much better, um, a much better view, okay, or much better, uh, more clarity come Tuesday, right? Labor Day is Monday. So I think tomorrow, just take it easy, take it trade by trade. Uh, obviously, I would love to see a gap up uh, strictly from the point of if these stocks do get rejected tomorrow into supply and start going green to red and confirm 10 o'clock lows, then of course, we're gonna have a lot of value tomorrow to the downside. Uh, but the problem is going to be tomorrow, if we do gap down, okay, um, you gotta give it a little more time. It's not just as simple as gap down and then all of a sudden reclaim, you know, reclaim uh, support and start rallying back up. It's gonna be a little tricky. So. The open tomorrow is going to be very, very important. Guys, for all you guys who are in the, in the webinar, please get to uh, morning strategy early tomorrow, you know, 9 o'clock or so. We want to make sure everybody's on the right, uh, on the right page. Uh, if you look at today, again, pretty good stuff. Not a lot, right? Not a lot. I think that was the most important part. Not a lot, but we did. I, I identified some good things today. Uh, Beyond was really, really good. Uh, Boeing was very, very good. Uh, ZM got destroyed. Apple got destroyed. Uh, and that was it. And that was kind of it for the day. So let's talk about the pivots really, really quickly. Uh, so BYND uh, got upgraded this morning. Uh, 134 sneaky area needs to build. Uh, 136 also has been rejected several times. I think we've, we've kind of covered that level a uh, few times at, at uh, nightly video. And 139 is macro, right? So uh, beyond was good. I got long at 134. Uh, so these were all the levels. So 134 was right here. 134 was the high of pre-market, right? Into supply, okay? So it took out 134. Here was the 136, right? This whole channel here for three days, for two days, excuse me, 136. And the 139, right? 139 was the highest from 827. So it took out everything, traded all the way up to 142. Really good move. I mean, very, very good move here. Uh, Boeing uh, was the next one, uh, 175, 75, 176 needs to build. Again, rotation, right? Uh, so here was Boeing, right? So here was the 176, right? Excuse me, right here, 176 right here. This whole channel here, 176 was the high here. 176 was 175.50. So 176 needed to clear and Boeing exploded. Like really the two very most aggressive moves, especially in the first hour were Boeing and beyond. I mean, super good. Uh, and then we started looking at some weakness. Again, it wasn't one of those things that I said, hey, Netflix is a short, Amazon's a short, Facebook is a short, everything's a short. I just started seeing some order flow on certain things like Apple. And again, this is where um, this is where option order flow really gives you kind of a good view of what happens next. So I started watching order flow on Apple. I started seeing some order flow on Zoom. And again, these were the two Again, everything got destroyed today, but at least these are the ones we were able to identify. Again, this for me to turn around and say, "Well, I knew the market was going to go down five percent." It's ridiculous. It's you know, it's ridiculous. If you notice, every single day we try to put some longs, we try to put some shorts, just in case the market doesn't want to do what we think it's going to do. So it was more of of just being responsible and saying, "Hey, you know what? The market just doesn't go up every single day." Allegedly. Let's watch some things to the downside. So we started watching uh, DraftKings never got up to the uh, 4150 area. Uh, so we started watching Zoom uh, 403 held twice on the 60 minute. If it builds below, it can flush. Zoom got destroyed, right? So here is the 43. So here is the 43. You see these two candles here, guys? Right? The the, the six uh, the the candles on in the pre market, right? Uh, 403, 403, and it broke 403. Just got absolutely destroyed. Went all the way down. Uh, into the 370s. Um, Apple, you know, we started watching this thing as well. I started watch. I started seeing when the stock was trading 127 and change, you just started seeing repeat 
repeat uh, uh, 125 and then 120 weekly put buyers. Just repeat over and over and over again. And we were watching this rising support, 126 rising support. If it builds below, it can flush. So here is Apple. Here is the rising support on Apple. Here is the 126 we were talking about, right? 126. And those guys, they got paid, man. Those guys got paid. Uh, it took out the 26, went all the way down to the 120 level. Uh, so that was a big move as well. Again, not everything worked. Uh, crowd, crowd surprisingly uh, did not get down to the 126 level, even with uh, all the selling. The, the low of the day was 127. Um, MMM didn't work. Uh, 170 rejected yesterday. If it needs to build, uh, MMM went up like 40 cents and then completely crashed. Uh, Cal Caterpillar did work. Uh, Caterpillar, uh, 149.70, 150 uh, needs to build. Um, you know, here's Caterpillar. Uh, took out the 150. Right, took out the 150. So here's the whole 150 level, and actually put up a you know dollar move. I know, is that good? Is that bad? I, again, I don't know. I didn't trade Caterpillar. Uh, I traded Beyond today. Traded Tesla today. Uh, so they were they were pretty good. Um, but 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 again, it wasn't one of those sessions you turn around and say, look, the night before I'm 200% sell bias. It was more we like something to the long side. We like some things to the short side. Again, nice and calm. Let's see the way things play out. So again. Uh, going into tomorrow's session, um, again, I would like to see a gap up in the market uh, just because the value is to the downside. Um, if they get stuffed in supply tomorrow in the 60-minute supply and they start rolling over, we could definitely find some better value to the downside and try to get some good flow ahead of the long weekends. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. I wish you all lots of love and happiness. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.